Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the AnyTalk UV6F handheld transceiver. The brand name is not one that I've come across previously, and it mustn't be confused with the other popular AnyTurn brand. Whilst both manufacturers are based in China, there doesn't seem to be any similarity between the two products. I found this radio when browsing around the Rugby Radio's website in the UK, and I thought it looked interesting due to its frequency coverage. It's marketed as a PMR, ham and marine radio that can cover a huge range of frequencies, but it's able to transmit from 136MHz right up to 560MHz continuous in the FM mode. In addition to this, it can also receive the VHF Civil Air Band in the AM mode. The radio can also receive the FM broadcast band. It's priced at 64 95 in the UK, which makes it a little bit more expensive than the average Baofeng, but you could maybe find this a little bit cheaper direct from China if you do some hunting around but when you consider you might have to put tax on it and shipping onto the price, it could work out a little bit more expensive and take longer to arrive. The radio itself is not the smallest or lightest of handhelds. That's partially due to the extra large 4,800 mAh battery pack supplied with the radio, and it reminds me of some of the more classic ham radio handhelds made by Kenwood and the ASU. That's not necessarily a bad thing, as it does mean it's easy to hold, seems quite robust, and has great battery life and hopefully good audio. The unit doesn't claim to have any kind of water resistance, and there is no IP rating specified, but it should be fine in the occasional rain shower outdoors. The UV6F is quite high powered. It claims a maximum output power of 10 watts. Three power levels are selectable, 1 watt, 5 watts, and 10 watts. We'll test the power a little later on in the review. Supplied in the box, we find a power supply, desktop charger, belt clip, battery, and of course the radio. The box proudly states that the product is an FM tram receiver. You'd think after all the years these kind of mistakes would have been a thing of the past, but not so. Next time guys, get somebody to proofread the packaging. There is no USB-C or any type of USB charging with this radio, unlike some of the competitors. You'll need to use the supplied desktop charger with the radio. This is a surprise, and I don't know why they couldn't have included a USB socket on the radio, as it's very useful when travelling. In my tests, I found that the battery can take somewhere between 4 and 5 hours to fully charge. There's also no Bluetooth connectivity, so you'll need to program the radio using the speaker mic jacks on the side of the radio with the standard Baofeng type cable. Due to the continuous transmit coverage, it could also be used in the United States on the 1.25 meter band, around 220 MHz. Sadly, that's not usable here in the UK or Europe, as this part of the radio spectrum is allocated to DAB broadcasting. Only one antenna is included in the box, and this seems to be centred around the 2m and 70cm amateur radio bands, so it may not be tuned to perform outside of these ranges, so if you were looking at operating on a specific frequency, you might want to replace it with something more suitable. The radio is equipped with a standard SMA female connector, so it should be fairly easy to find something suitable. At first glance, the UV6F appears to be very similar in design to the Radtel RT490 that we reviewed last year. The screen layout is suspiciously similar, and it's obvious that these radios share some heritage to each other, but with several firmware tweaks. The LCD display is bright and clear, and again the backlight can be programmed to stay on continually if required. With this being a colour LCD display, it can sometimes be difficult to see outdoors in bright sunlight, but most of the time it's absolutely fine. The menu operation of this radio is different to the Radtel, and it seems much easier and logically laid out. One of the best things about this radio is the 1000 channel memory, I know that many of the Chinese radios now come with a thousand memory channels such as the Baofeng UV13 Pro that we looked at recently, but they were all lacking in one key thing, any kind of memory bank organisation. It's all very well having a thousand memories, but you seldom want to scan them in one go, as it would take a long time and you might only be interested in one particular area, such as airband or marine traffic. That's where the AnyTalk UV6F comes in. The radio has banks of memories organised into blocks of a hundred channels, making this so much better for memory management. For example, I can have the first 100 channels allocated to PMR radio, the next block allocated to marine band, a further block dedicated to ham radio repeaters, and maybe another 100 for the air band. In the radio settings options, you can choose to scan a block of channels, or simply all of them. This is the first time I've seen a scanner style memory and block system in operation on a low cost PMR handheld. It's a welcome step forward, and it makes the radio so much more usable, and could even replace a scanner for some people. The scanning speed is not record breaking, but it's good enough. It seems to be around 4 channels per second. PC programming software can be downloaded for the UV6F, and whilst it's basic, it does allow you to change almost every aspect of the radio and make the most use of those 1000 memory channels. 
Sadly, the one thing that is lacking in almost all of these Chinese radios is the ability to cut, copy and paste memory channels and move them from one location to another. This is frustrating if you want to move a group of channels to another memory bank or location. And the only option you really have is to delete and reprogram. It's not like this is a new problem, and even some of the big name manufacturers have had this, such as Kenwood and Yesu. I don't believe that Chirp is available for the radio, but we can only hope that support is added in the future. Apart from that, the software is pretty solid and works okay on my Windows 11 computer, which is always a good sign. The programming cable I used is the same one I've had for years, and programming many Baofeng and Kenwood radios with the same type of connection. Speed of reading and writing data seem to be fine considering how many memory locations are available. So that's the positives about the radio, but now we've got a few negatives that have become apparent whilst testing. As well as scanning stored memory channels, the radio can search between two preset limits. Two are usable defined for the VHF and UHF frequency ranges, but I've discovered something that is a bit of a setback. It would appear that you cannot define a search range for anything outside of the 136 to 174 and 400 and 480 MHz range. This means you cannot effectively scan any airband frequencies. Likewise, if you want to go hunting around the 200 MHz band, you cannot do a search in that range as the radio will accept these frequencies as a valid input for the VFO search limits. This seems to be an oversight in the current firmware and hopefully something that can be corrected. Another problem is that whilst the unit covers the UHF military airband, you cannot select the AM mode for reception on these frequencies. This is a major blow for anyone hoping to program in a few of their favourite frequencies to do a little monitoring in this area. Rugby radios in the UK have been in touch with the manufacturer and they are hoping to release an updated firmware that may fix this issue. If they can fix the preset limitations and add the AM option to the receiver on this band, then it would make it an ideal low cost scanner. Another feature in this radio includes GPS positioning, which can be transmitted to another similar unit. We first saw this similar system in the Radtel, but it's not APRS. However, it could be useful in some circumstances. If nothing else, I found it useful when out on the hilltops to calculate my height above sea level, which is always a talking point whilst out DXing. Another great feature is the close call frequency cloning. The radio can grab the transmitted frequency of another nearby unit. This could be handy if you wanted to discover the transmit frequency of a different brand of radio. It can also decode the CTCSS and DCS code in use. In my tests, I've found that this can be a little bit hit and miss, and at times you might have to repeat the process several times to get an accurate result. Again, it's a useful additional feature if you don't have a frequency counter available. There are two options available for this function, one for listening on VHF and the other for UHF. Now let's check out the power levels on the radio. see the power varies significantly as the band changes. The highest we managed to obtain was around 9 watts of power at 145 MHz and 430 MHz respectively. The higher you go in frequency, the lower the power output from the radio. But seriously, how many of you guys can legally transmit above 500 MHz anyway? I've taken this radio out and about for the past few weeks testing it mainly on PMR446 frequencies and around the 2 meter amateur radio band. Please remember that technically the radio is not approved for use on the 446 band, as its power level is way above the 0.5 watts that is currently allowed in the UK and Europe. I've made some interesting contacts over some impressive distances. Here's a few clips that I've recorded to give you some idea of how well the radio works, including the audio and the received quality. Enjoy. Uh, Roger, yeah, it sounds great. No, no problems whatsoever. I'll give you the call sign anyway. The call sign's Charlie Tango 3433. That's Charlie Tango 3433 in the East Hull Villages. And you're about a 5x7, five 5x8 by five, five by at times. Yeah, very good, Mark. Yeah, thanks for the radio report. Um, like I say, you, you're booming through to me on this side. These radios don't really have a proper uh, sort of signal meter on them. They, they tend to read all or nothing sometimes, but uh, you're giving me into the red anyway on the uh, on the meter on this one. But um, this is the radio I was telling you about anyway. It's got the uh, very wide frequency coverage. 
it covers all the way through from 136 up to, uh, I think it's 480 megahertz. Or no, actually it goes even higher. It goes to 550 megahertz. And it's got continual transmit all the way through from there. So uh, it's quite unusual really, yeah? Uh, Roger, Roger, yeah, I've just been having a read of some of them. They seem to be going up into the 500s now, don't they? The, uh, the, with the uh, receive range. But yeah, if you can transmit that, that in that range, that's, that's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a fair old range, that is. And you've also got the uh, AM airband receiver as well. Now, apparently, it's supposed to be getting a firmware update, this radio, very soon. And they're supposed to be allowing it to switch to AM mode up in the military airband as well. So, obviously, at the moment, it can receive the military air frequencies. But um, you can't switch to AM, so it's only of limited use. But um, apparently, the manufacturer is supposed to be releasing some firmware that's going to fix that problem, you know. So... Uh, We'll have to watch this space and see if it does come off, yeah? Hi, Roger, Roger. Yeah, I mean, what they're doing with these little cheap Chinese radios and the um, firmware from is unbelievable at the moment. Yeah, this one's got the dual VFO as well, so it's got two standbys on there. So it's uh, actually pretty good. Um, you can be monitoring the airband at the same time as you're on PMR, and it'll switch between the two VFOs, which is quite nice. So if there's nothing on the PMR band... You can just uh, go listening to the uh, aircraft as well, which is quite good, or your local repeaters or anything like that. But um, one of the things I do like about it, though, Mark, is it's got a 1,000 memories, and it's organised into blocks of 100. So you can actually separate it out. Unlike a lot of these cheaper radios, you can actually uh, separate the memories and get it to just scan the ones that you want. So, for example, you could have a block of frequencies for the... Um, the military air band or the uh, the civil air band or marine band or amateur radio and keep them separate from everything else really, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I've just been doing that on the uh, bow thing. I mean, it actually, it's a, it's a good little idea it's got because you, put it, you can put them in zones. So now I have a PMR zone analogue, PMR zone digital, and, um, and obviously the, um, the, the DMR talk groups. But yeah, it's... Uh, it is, it's, it's unbelievable what you can do for the price now. Yeah, well, this one's only sixty four ninety five. It's available from uh, Rugby Radios. That's where I got this one from. And, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. It's, it's good audio quality. Everything about it's well made. So I'm quite impressed. But, uh, I mean, we're on a fair old distance between us here. Got to be at least uh, 25, 25 miles in a straight line, I'd say. Something like that. So it's not doing too bad. And I'm only on the mid-power setting. It does go up to high power as well. Uh, basically, low power's about 1 watt. Uh, mid-power's 5 watts, which is what we're on now. And uh, full power is on 9 watts, you know. So it's, it's a fairly powerful little radio, really. Yeah, it's certainly working well. Certainly working well. And uh, I, I think the deal, I just think it's unbelievable what you can buy for your money nowadays when you compare to what you used to um, get for your money. You know, these um, Chinese radios seem to be taking over they're virtually disposable for the price so if you've had them a few months or six months a year and you drop them they're, they're easily to replace definitely yeah yeah definitely mark yeah you can have a lot of fun with them can't you really so uh, it opens up um world of amateur radio and pmr to everybody really you know they're quite affordable so uh, yeah anyway thanks for the uh, quick radio report mark i'm gonna go and get back in car and get warmed up in a minute so i'll switch back to do the radio in a second because uh, weather conditions up here are pretty appalling this uh, afternoon it's uh, not great at all really we've just had hailstones a few minutes ago and i look on, on the horizon there's more bad weather on the way as well up here i'm afraid to tell you uh, roger, roger. You've got to get yourself warmed up then, Sam, and I'll, I'll carry on monitoring. Um, M0, GBAG0, POQ. G0, POQ, M0, GBA. Well, you're not alone, Dave. Very few of us seem to have done anything uh, much uh, radio uh, yeah, this week. Uh, a few people have listened to contacts, made one or two contacts, uh, but, uh, well, not done a lot. So... Anyhow, with that, it's uh, back over to you, Dave. 2-0 IDL from M0 JBA. Over. M0 JBA, 2 IDL. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, no, as I say, I haven't really done a lot. I've uh, tidied up the shack a little bit. I've got it sort of more or less exactly as I want it now. Um, and I can hear things. I've uh, bought a couple of... Uh, uh, speakers which I've plugged into the radio which is, gives much better sound than the little speaker in the radio 
uh, I, would, I would courtesy a ranchster, but uh, um, rather than buy a, an icon thing for a few hundred quid, I thought I'd spend 24 quid on a couple of cheapies from Asda, but they work very well. Um, I'm tidying things up, and that's about it at the moment. Um, as I say, I haven't done a great deal. I did a lot with FT8, and there's a couple of curious out of Ireland, but apart from that, not a lot. So, uh, over to you, Chris, G1 WSA from 2.0 IDL. Yeah, from uh, G1 WSA, right, I'll just run through the report first. Uh, input reports, uh, JBA 59, uh, IDL 59, RKK 59, IWE 55, uh, JOV full scale deflection, so I don't know what it is on this thing, 20, 30, 40 over DB deep, over. Uh, 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 KPE 3 and 1, can hear the signal, really struggling to read. POQ 4 and 1, not quite as bad, uh, readable just about, uh, but uh, struggling. Uh, that's, that's the important part. Uh, tidy up, I, I've also had a failed attempt at tidying up over the weekend. Uh, um, uh, John, I, I started tidying up and then thought, oh, I might might earth the beacon uh, when I found some bits so that I also failed uh, cobweb um, th they seem to be very th 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 the reports on the scene very good people seem to get good results with them uh, nice compact antenna sort of quite a good um, good antenna really um, you know for, for sort of uh, you know situations where it's sort of hard to get to, to get to get the run um, you know, which can be can be uh, can be can be quite difficult to get the to get the running. Uh, you know, especially with gardens being being be funny shapes and, and one thing or another. So the cobweb just seems to it seems to be uh, very good. Uh, Trevor, just wondering what you done with the forty? How much you shortened it by? And uh, uh, how, how how long it is? I've, I've got a forty in the loft, but mine's so heavily shortened it's uh, it, it's all loading coil and no no action. Heading to London, one to eight, one three zero, contact six to Julian Biddy. Good morning, 162 Papa Uniform, 0280 in Bond, Cockhouse, and B260 below at the Pole Hill. Try to air call this angle 160, 162 Papa Uniform. Right heading 120 degrees, if you had 160. So there you go guys, that's the radio working, hopefully you enjoyed those clips, I enjoyed working it and making some contacts out there. Now, is it actually worth the money compared to a Balfour? I would say yes, if you're looking for a radio that can be used as a makeshift scanner or a low cost kind of radio for receiving everything from airband through to marine band, then yes, this might be the one to choose. It does like the USB-C capability and it doesn't have Bluetooth or anything fancy like that, but it does a good job of receiving across the frequency range and everything seems quite solid and robust about this particular rig. If any talk can come up with an updated firmware to improve those few glitches that I found and add the AM mode switchable for the military airband, then that would be a big bonus and I'm sure a lot of other people would be interested in buying this radio as well. But for now, it's certainly worth the price, but don't hold out for the firmware update because in the case of these Chinese radios, it doesn't always come off, but uh, it may be worth keeping an eye on things with rugby radios to see what they come up with in the future. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll hopefully have some more interesting radio gear to review very shortly. Stay tuned. Thanks very much. Bye bye for now.